in a previous session related to the basics of accounts we were talking about the concepts related to the just just one moment related to the transaction is what we had started talking about we talked about that there are two types of transactions one is a cash transaction and the other is a credit transaction and i had given you certain statements in which you were supposed to identify whether those are cash or credit transaction and you were supposed to identify the type of account getting affected in that the accounts which were getting affected in those respective transaction is what you were supposed to identify i hope you have completed that ah uh, who is it pratiksha can you send me the whatsapp of those questions that statement which you had completed please send me the whatsapp so that i can check it all right you yeah, have got it now don't send it on the group because it gets confused uh, it creates the confusion well let me go into the transaction straight forward let's observe whether those are cash or credit transactions and then we'll try to observe which accounts are getting affected in each of such transaction the very first in that was cash deposited in bank oh my god you deleted it immediately ah uh, cash deposited in bank of course this is involving cash as well as bank therefore it will surely be a cash transaction all right and therefore this will be considered as a cash transaction and the accounts which will be getting affected in this case is the cash account and bank account not the deposit account why not the deposit account is because in the bank you maintain the variety of the accounts we don't identify those accounts with those particular names all right the second one check issued to a supplier again it will be treated as a cash transaction and therefore the accounts getting affected in that will be instead of check it will be bank and the person to whom that check is given that is radhe the two accounts getting affected in that is bank account and radhe account then received by check from a customer krishna received by check from a customer krishna you have received the money so bank and krishna again that is also a cash transaction cash paid to renu cash account and renu account these are the two accounts getting affected in that because again it is a cash transaction and you have been given the name of person but not the purpose therefore cash account and renu account these are the two accounts getting affected in that then cash paid to sachin for repairs of car cash paid to sachin for for repairs of car purpose is being mentioned in a cash transaction if the purpose is given person is not important so the account getting affected will be the cash account and repairs account and not sachin's account why repairs account and not sachin's account is because repair is an expense against which you have paid the money to sachin so purpose is important and not the purpose if any and everyone has a question on these all you can keep raising those questions right away check received from kartik towards the interest on loan check that means bank account getting affected and received from kartik but for interest therefore the accounts getting affected will be bank account and interest account and not kartik's account then uh, paid to rishi for rent of office paid to rishi now they have not mentioned whether it is cash or credit but paid means what there is a payment by cash isn't it so the accounts getting affected will be cash account and rent account goods sold to tanu against the check goods sold to tanu against the check 
it is again a cash transaction. So accounts getting affected will be bank account because again check the OI. So bank account and sale account. All right. Goods purchased from Manu on credit, very specifically given on credit. Therefore, the account getting affected will be purchase account and Manu account. Then salaries paid, nothing has been mentioned. So we have to presume that it is a cash transaction. So salaries and cash, these are the two accounts getting affected in that. And interest received, again, received means what? Paisa aara hai. So cash and interest will get affected in that case. Am I clear for everyone? Yes, if anyone has any kind of question, you just raise those first and then I'll go ahead to the next aspect. Shall I go ahead? In the second transaction, even stock is getting affected along with other two. Please remember, check issued to a supplier, Rade. There is no question of stock getting affected because this must be an amount which has already been paid or sorry, already payable. And again, that if you have paid the money, there is no question of stock getting affected in that. Even if you have purchased the goods, in that case, also the stock does not get affected. Why stock does not get affected? Because we are talking about financial accounting. So in the financial accounting, we are going to worry. We are going to worry about only the financial effects. We are not going to affect. Uh, we are not going to consider the effects on the stock or sentiments or something like that. Am I right? Okay. Now let me come ahead to the next aspect. Now that you have understood what is a transaction, you have understood what is a cash transaction, you have understood what is a credit transaction. As we have been following the double entry accounting system, so you have also understood the point that in every transaction, we will surely be finding minimum two accounts being getting affected. Now that we have understood these all aspects, let's try to focus upon the different types of accounts. Humko sirf transaction find karna, transaction will affect hone wale account find karna, itna hi important nahi hai. Which account is getting affected? What is the type of that account? And based on the type, whether that account will be debited or credited. I had said this earlier also, if you remember, an account is basically a summary of different transactions related to a particular person or activity. This is what we have already discussed. Correct or not? Now that I have prepared the account, this left hand side of the account is called as debit side. And the right hand side of the account is called as the credit side as we rec we keep recording the transactions on the debit side these all are called as debit records that's why we write the short form there as debit as dr because that indicates what debit records and when we are writing something onto the credit side of the of the account it is identified as credit record that's why we call that as credit cr Right. Now, if you are writing something, writing giving effect on debit side of an account means 
account debited all right similarly giving credit effect to an account means account credited am i right now when you are debiting the account there has to be some logic behind it that on what basis you will debit the account or you will credit the account and that logic of account being debited or account being credited is based on the golden rules of accounting but these golden rules of accounting are set out considering the different types of accounts so for these all understanding in detail we first will be required to understand what is the various types of accounts am i going good for everyone you can just write this just complete writing it is done okay so let's understand the types of accounts the accounts are basically divided into two types the majority accounts are divided into two types one is the account related to the person we call those as the personal accounts and second the accounts which are not related to persons we call those as impersonal accounts now when we are giving the effect of a transaction to the personal accounts in that case the rule will be different but when we are talking about the effects in impersonal accounts the rules will be different so let's let's have an understanding on what these all accounts are within the impersonal accounts the accounts are further divided into the real accounts and the nominal accounts what are personal accounts i said the accounts related to persons is what we call as the personal accounts the accounts related to impersonal within that the real account account that is related to what a business owns is called as real account whereas the account related to the incomes and expenses is called as the nominal account so let's understand it types of accounts within that personal accounts and impersonal accounts in the personal accounts we have the account related to natural person like the account related to you and me is called as the natural personal account there is something called as artificial person now what is an artificial person the person that is created by a law that is what we call as the artificial person 
एंड देर इज समिंग कॉल्ड एज रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल इसका मैं सिर्फ आपको रेफरेंस दे दूंगा इसका डिटेल हम लोग बाद में डिस्कस करेंगे रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट राइट वेर एज द इम पर्सनल अकाउंट आर कैटेगराइज एज रियल अकाउंट एंड द नॉमिनल अकाउंट ना आई से द अकाउंट रिलेटेड टू अ पर्सन दट इज That person can be a natural person. That person can be an artificial person, or even it can be an it can be a representative personal account. Understand the point in here. When I am talking about natural person, that is quite clear and simple to understand. The account related to you and me. If in my books of accounts I am preparing your account, like Aditya account, Bhavna account, Jayashree account, Rafsan account. then those all accounts will be called as the personal accounts because those are the accounts related to the natural persons living people but if there is an organization being formed if there is a bank if there is a financial institution if there is a government authority the accounts related to these all are not called as artificial are not called as natural but artificial personal account because these all authorities these all organizations are the persons which are created by a law separately applicable for it and therefore the accounts related to that are called as artificial persons and we have the same treatment as that for the natural person when it comes to the artificial person whereas if an account is representing if an account is indicating any benefit receivable from or to be given to any cash receivable from or payable to a natural or an artificial person then in that case that account is also considered as an artificial person sorry representative person means what suppose i have paid certain amount in advance to my employee the salary advance account now this salary advance account indicates what that i have paid certain amount payable as salary in advance which means what to the person to the employee to whom i paid my salaries in advance from him i am still to receive the benefit or not and therefore and that benefit will be received from whom from the employee only or not and therefore i said that the re sorry the salary advance account will be considered as an artificial person because salary advance account indicates the benefit receivable from a person only am i going good for everyone are aap log mujhe samajh pa rahe ho ya nahi you people don't respond at all i am talking in front of a robot does not mean i am talking to the robots mere samne laptop hai which is a kind of robot for me but you people sitting at your places are not robot you are humans isn't it and you can respond very comfortably tumko kisi ne mana karke rakha hua hai kya baat nahi karne ka class mein okay account related to individuals is a natural person account artificial person account related to a person 
created under a law like company account bank account government authority account these all are the artificial persons representative person i said what account indicating money or benefit receivable or payable to a person receivable from or payable to a person example prepaid expenses outstanding expenses outstanding means what expenses which have become due but those are not yet been paid that's why it is called as outstanding expenses am i right now what is real account account related to what a business owns it may be building it may be machinery it may be vehicles it may be the property it may be the computers anything that is owned by the business it may be cash it may be stock anything that is owned by the business is what we call as the account related to the bus what business owns and those all accounts will be considered as real accounts whereas nominal accounts are what accounts related to incomes or expenses the accounts related to incomes or expenses is considered as the nominal accounts so these are the primarily three types of accounts the how do we apply the rules on that we'll talk about that separately but first you write these types of accounts I hope you people are writing it. Can you raise hands for me? Ah.
Is it done? Okay. Now let's learn what are the different rules of accounting. We call those as golden rules of accounting. These golden rules of accounting are to tell you that what have to be debited and what have to be credited in a particular transaction. On what basis do we decide that which is which account to be debited, which account to be credited is nothing but these golden rules of accounting. So let's observe these golden rules of accounting. For each type of account, the different rules are applicable, as I said earlier also. Now let's talk about the very first that is personal account. Now, how do you apply these rules is looking at you. You are the business. From your perspective, what is the effect? That is what you have to decide. In the case of personal account, the rule is debit the receiver of benefit. Debit the receiver of benefit. Whereas credit the giver of benefit. Credit the giver of benefit. You have to look at it from your perspective. Tum businessman ho. Tum business ke accounting kar rahe ho. Tumhare liye saamne wale ko benefit mila hai ya tumko saamne wale se benefit mila hai. If he is receiving the benefit from you, then he is the receiver of benefit. So his account will be debited in your books. But if that person is giving you the benefit, then he becomes the giver of benefit. So his account will be credited in your books of accounts. But if you look at it from his perspective, then he will, if you are debiting him, he will credit you. If you are crediting him, he will debit you. That's how the rules of accounting apply. Am I clear? Then for the real accounts, for real accounts, the rule is what? Debit what comes in and credit what goes out. If something is coming into your business, If you have purchased something and that thing is coming into your business, then you need to debit that account because the rule is what? Debit what comes in and credit what goes out. If you have purchased an asset that is coming into your business, so you debit it. If you have paid the cash to someone, cash is going out, so cash is credited because real account is related to what? what a business owns. Therefore, the rule will be applied on the basis of whether that thing that you are going to own is coming into your business or going out of your business. If it is coming into your business, you debit it. If it is going out of your business, you credit it. And the rule for nominal account, the third one, is debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains. Whatever you are paying, whatever is your kharchas, whatever is your losses, you need to debit those all. Whereas, if you are earning something, if you are getting some revenue, then revenue income will be credited in your books of accounts. I said it very simply that to apply these rules, 
you need to observe from your perspective whether you are receiving the benefit or you are giving the benefit is not the case whether the person from with whom you are dealing is getting the benefit or giving the benefit if he is receiver debit if he is giver credit if an asset is coming into your business debit if it is going out of your business credit if there is an expense or loss debit if there is an income or gain credit am i clear for all we just complete writing these rules of accounting in our next session that is tomorrow we are going to apply these rules to the different types of transactions but tomorrow our session will be at 7 o'clock in the morning as decided earlier tomorrow's lecture will not be at 11 all right is it done okay so we'll meet tomorrow morning at 7 thank you sorry bandh nahi karne de raha hai